Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today we are reviewing the Zero Tolerance 0562 tie, also known as the Hinderer Slicer. The knife that is for those of you who like Hinderer designs, but not Hinderer prices. You see, the design language on this one is 100% recognizable. It looks very similar to the XM18, and that is not something that anyone's ever going to argue against. That said, there are some distinct differences between this and something like an XM18 or an XM24. The Hinderer designs that hit zero tolerance are different. And there's some things I love about this knife, and there's some things that I really don't love about this knife, but there's a lot of good, so we're going to go ahead and talk about that first. On the subject of specs, we have an overall length of eight and a quarter inches with a three and a half inch blade that's made entirely of CPM 20 CV. It's got a satin finish, and that's a high hollow ground. The handle scales are titanium, and we have T8 hardware all around except for the pocket clip screw, which is T10, and then the over travel stop, which is T6. It is a deep carry pocket clip, and we've got a decent amount of jipping here on the back handle scale, as well as right here on the spine of the blade where you'd rest your thumb. The ergos on this knife are pretty decent. You know, it's not necessarily harsh on the hand. The flipper tab definitely tells you where your index finger is supposed to stop and not move any further, and that's okay. It kind of acts like a finger guard, so if you are jabbing into something, your finger is not going to slip onto that blade. There is no backspacer, but we do have plenty of barrel spacers. And on the inside, we have some pocketed milling that allows for, well, I mean, it's not a light knife. This knife comes in at about five and a half ounces, which is to say that it is on the heavier side for some people, but also it could be a lot heavier with that being said. What are the deployment options? Well, it's got one deployment option and one option only, and you know my thoughts on that. If it's got one deployment option, it's got to be the showstopper. And how good is it? Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty damn good. Now, I could go into detail talking about just how good this action is running on those KVT ball bearings. However, I do want to refer back to the owner of this knife, which is The Knight's Edge. Make sure you go ahead and check out his channel. He is hilarious. And when he told me what his description of the action was, I knew I had to share it. He says, in my humble opinion, the flipping action on that thing is like throwing a cantaloupe into a field of butter while Celine Dion sings, my heart will go on. It's pretty dang good. And honestly, the action is, man, I love it. The action is phenomenal. It's a frame lock knife, and we're going to see a lock up here of about 30%. That is to say that there is absolutely no blade play. We have a lot of contact between this stop pin as well as the frame con contacting the spine of the blade. So the lockup is extremely confident. There is absolutely no lock rock or blade play and blade centering on this is coming in dead center, which is good to see because I have flipped this thing a million times thinking about how I wanted to describe that action. And oftentimes when you fidget with knives, they will of course lose centering if a pivot loosens up. So I love the blade shape. I love the grind. This deep high hollow grind allows for it to get very thin here be behind the edge which is why they call it the hinderer slicer and if you know about the xm18 you've probably heard that those are chonky and do not have the best edge geometry so a variant like this is actually going to outperform something like a stock xm18 when it comes to slicing because it has that thinner blade profile, which is going to allow you to slide through materials a lot easier. You can flip up the grip. That is no problem. In a reverse grip, it works well too. But again, that flipper tab is going to keep your pinky from riding up onto that blade if you jab it into something that offers any kind of resistance. Billboarding on the blade is not a huge deal. We do have a little bit. It says ZT and you know what? On the other side, it reminds you that this was in fact designed by Rick Hinderer. And if you look closely, you'll also 
will see a serial number. I really like it when knives include serial numbers, even if they're not technically limited models. It's nice to know, you know, in what order was your knife born, and I really do enjoy that. But there are a few things on this knife that I do not enjoy, and we are going to go ahead and talk about those now. While I appreciate the fact that Zero Tolerance slash Hinderer wanted to go for a different design with this pocket clip, I do not actually like the pocket clip very much. Uh, first of all, it's a hideous pocket clip. It looks cheap on a knife that is decidedly not cheap. 312 bucks is not cheap. And while it is less expensive than what you'd pay for an actual Hinderer XM18, uh, what are we doing with this pocket clip? I don't think that it looks very good. Does it function well? Yeah. I mean, I do notice the bill of this clip in the middle of my hand. It's not a huge deal. It's not what I would consider to be a hot spot, but I notice it. And, you know, for utility purposes and ergonomic purposes, I'd prefer not to notice it well at all. Now, the design is kind of interesting because it's a bent pocket clip that comes up and around the scales and it is screwed in through the scale but the bottom part of the clip itself is not on that top layer, so it does not need to be recessed because it's hiding on the underside of the scale. And then it's connected with this barrel spacer. Something that I don't like about it is the fact that they use a dome screw. It's not quite sticking out a huge amount, but it could have been flush and they could have fixed that. They could have given it a flush screw, but instead they decided not to. They carried on the design language of those dome screws we see on the body. So I don't like the overall design. I don't like the look of it, but a pocket clip is one of those things that should be utility first. And in that aspect, it works adequately. The other thing that I don't like is the difference in screw sizes. When I started to check out these screw sizes, I was elated to find out that we had T8 body screws, that we had a T8 pivot, that we had a T8 lock bar insert. And then I was confused when I found out that the pocket clip screw is T10 and on top of that, the over travel stop is T6. What are we doing here? Why do I need three different bits to take this knife apart? And why did they think that that was necessary? I don't believe for a hot second that we need three bits for this knife. What I think we need is just T8s all around. That's what I would prefer. Or if you're going to go ham, go ahead and do T10s all around. If you want it to be super ultra heavy duty, I'm okay with that. I just want one bit size when I go to take a knife apart. And in this case, we don't have it. We have three. Most of the bits are in fact T8, but throwing in a T6 and a T10 means that you are going to spend more time than you would normally would, especially considering that this has way more screws than the average knife. And then the final thing that I'm not a huge fan of on this knife is that external stop pin. Well, I do like external stop pins. This one kind of masquerades as a thumb stud, but trust me when I say you can use it as a thumb stud. I don't necessarily suggest it. The edges on there are harsh and I don't necessarily believe that it was ever meant to serve a dual purpose. Now I've heard that some XM18 and other hinderer designs have a thumb stud that is a thumb stud and is supposed to act as a stop pin. But in this case, I truly believe that its only function is to be a stop pin, but they don't mention that. They just have it there and then you go to try it and it turns out to be a bit of a bad day once you do. So that's not necessarily the greatest, but there are a lot of things to love on this knife. And I did want to mention what I loved and what I didn't like. And ultimately, I think that for 312 bucks, if you want a truly American made knife from one of the better well-known American knife makers, uh, you can get this one from ZT designed by Rick Hinderer and you won't have too much to complain about at the end of the day. Or you could just wait for an XM18 drop, pay $425 and then an extra 200 bucks if you're lucky enough to grab one of their single titanium show side scales. So that's it. That's my final thoughts on the ZT0562 tie. It is way better than I thought it would be, and it had a few more issues than I thought it would have. But now I'm ready to hear your opinion. If, By the way, guys, if you want one of these, these are in fact available online, and I will link to them down below. That will be an affiliate link. So if you decide to purchase one using that link, yes, it will help my channel, but that is 100% your choice. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the Hinderer 0562 tie? 
high? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it something that you're going to consider picking up or would you rather just go ahead and get a Hinderer XM18? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to watch more awesome knife and EDC content, make sure to click on one of the videos that pops up next.